Hey everybody, welcome to the class. It's nice to see you again. And uh, well, uh, tomorrow is the last day of the week. Remember that on Monday we will be finishing all the classes. And also remember that we need to finish all the platform, right? So we need to finish all the platform uh, by this weekend. So please work on that one if you still don't. And uh, about the survey from Insta for as well, uh, remember that we're going to do that in the class this incoming Monday. And this is the class of tonight. And uh, homework is going to be uh, this one that is for you to choose what will be the best option, okay? All right, so let's check the attendance as we usually do. Christian Alexander Areval Delgado. Daniel Antonio Luna. Present teacher. Good. Daniel Arquímedes Florentino Garcia. Erika Yasmin Martinez Carpio. Present. Good. <clears throat> Fátima Denise Aguilar Márquez. Germán Alexander Durán Linares. Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. Present teacher. Good. Iván Petrovich Guzmán Aquino. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Holman Saúl Girón Sánchez. Present. Good. José Alberto Baños Hernández. Present, teacher. Good. Carla Lorena Leiva Contreras. Kenia Cecilia Ruiz Morán. Present, teacher. Good. Lucy Natalie Juárez de Ramírez. Right here. Good. Manuel Antonio es camilla jurado. Present teacher. Good. Nelson Antonio Erroda Rosales. Present. Good. Oswin Alexis Flores Hernández. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Solma Janet Ramírez Ábalos. Present. Good. Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemus. Present. Good. David Alexander Rodriguez Sanchez. Present teacher. Okay, very good. So everybody here, right? Teacher, sure. I'm here. <laughs> okay, very good. Got you. Me too. I am here, teacher. Very good. Perfect. I'm just checking for that here. All right, all right. So uh, we're going to start with a video. Uh, the, then we're going to discuss. This is an interesting one. So let's see how it goes. And uh, hold on a second. Just check something here. Yes. All right. Here we go. As usual, we're going to give uh, comments or provide opinions about this. Right. So here we go. Hola a todos. Soy Sam y acabo de cumplir 17 años. Hace algunos años, antes de mi primer año en la escuela secundaria, quería tocar la caja en la banda de marcha de la escuela secundaria de Foxborough, era un sueño que tenía que cumplir. Pero cada caja y arnés pesaban alrededor de 40 libras cada uno y tengo una enfermedad llamada progeria. Entonces, para darles una idea, solo peso alrededor de 50 libras. Así que, desde el punto de vista logístico, no podía llevar una caja de tamaño normal, y por eso el director de la banda me asignó tocar la percusión en el foso durante el espectáculo del medio tiempo. La percusión fue divertida. Contaba con unos instrumentos de percusión auxiliares muy buenos, como bongos, timbales y cencerros. 
Así que fue divertido, pero no implicaba marchar, y yo estaba desolado. Sin embargo, nada me impediría tocar la caja con la banda de música en el espectáculo de medio tiempo. Así que mi familia y yo trabajamos con un ingeniero para diseñar un arnés de caja que fuera más liviano y fácil de llevar. Así que, tras un trabajo ininterrumpido, fabricamos un aparato de redoblante que solo pesa unos 6 libras. Me gustaría darles más información sobre la proyeria. Afecta solo a unos 350 niños en la actualidad, en todo el mundo. Por lo tanto, es bastante rara, y los efectos de la proyeria incluyen piel tirante, falta de aumento de peso, retraso en el crecimiento y enfermedades del corazón. El año pasado, mi mamá y su equipo de científicos publicaron el primer estudio exitoso sobre el tratamiento de la proyeria y, debido a esto, me entrevistaron en NPR y John Hamilton me hizo la pregunta, ¿qué es lo más importante que la gente debería saber sobre ti? Y mi respuesta fue simplemente que tengo una vida muy feliz. A pesar de que hay muchos obstáculos en mi vida, muchos de ellos creados por la proyeria, no quiero que la gente se sienta mal por mí. No pienso en estos obstáculos todo el tiempo y puedo superar la mayoría de ellos de todos modos. Así que estoy aquí hoy para compartir con ustedes mi filosofía para una vida feliz. Entonces, para mí, hay tres aspectos en esta filosofía. Esta es una cita del famoso Ferris Weller. El primer aspecto de mi filosofía es que estoy de acuerdo con lo que finalmente no puedo hacer porque hay mucho que puedo hacer. Ahora, la gente a veces me hace preguntas como, ¿no es duro vivir con Progeria? ¿O qué desafíos diarios de Progeria enfrentas? Y me gustaría decir que, Ok, we're going to stop. In that minute, and I want you to tell me what did you understand, but in English, of course, not in Spanish. And so you, he... you say the words there in, in Spanish, so that was the exercise. Let me see how, how it goes. Go ahead. Uh, he's talking about her, his illness, and what kind of of question the people ask him about how can how he can live with that and what is the the things that uh, he can uh, uh, live all the all days and how he uh, feel about that very good perfect so uh yes he has an illness and he was speaking about uh, what what it's like to be in his condition what happened when, when he was kind of younger and oh, things like that any other opinion any other comments of course in english not in speech in my case something that i impact uh, or her case is that when somebody uh, asking him uh, what is the most important thing that that his life he say I a uh, a person living happy so uh, although you're 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 sick very good so that is very interesting right because I mean, when you see somebody like this, sometimes we believe uh, poor people, right? But no, he's happy. He lives very well. He uh, had done many things. I mean, he's kind of famous, right, actually. Uh, maybe it's not, it's not easy. But everybody can, can be happy and everybody can have a very good life, right? Any other comments or opinion? Okay, 
yeah, in the advanced module, in the oh, one of the last ones, we're going to do this activity. You now, the activity is that uh, somebody is going to speak in Spanish and you are going to translate into English what the person is saying. So that is a very good exercise because, um, I mean, it's very easy when you try to do it the other way around. But when you want to uh, translate from Spanish to English, so you have to speak in English, but what the other people say sometimes is kind of difficult. Anyways, we're going to continue. We're talking about motivation. And uh, we're going to read about this uh, round now. Uh, let's see. Uh, Daniel Archimedes, could you please read the first slide? OK. Times have changed. It's not as easy as just throwing orders around and expecting to get results as a leader. Shouting orders and at people isn't an effective way to keep them motivated. The basis of motivation is rooted in positive emotions. Whether you have just recently been promoted into a leadership role, or you have been in one for a while, peer motivation can be difficult. This can be a challenging and frustrating situation to be in. Maybe you have finally found your dream opportunity or have put together your perfect team with stellar people. You have spent the time needed to find the right fit for each role. Each person has an excellent background and a track record of success. Very good. What did you understand? Let me see. I think dependent doesn't matter what is your problem. If you solve it, you can be your self motivation personal. I think. Um, you can find your dream if you search your opportunity. Uh, you can spend your time to help you uh, to improve your knowledge, your be healthy. I think only that. Perfect. Thank you. So yes, it's interesting, right? What it says that in the in the first paragraph, that is something very important. Uh, it's not only that you give orders, right? It's not that you say do this, do that other thing, and then people are going to say, oh, okay, let's do everything, right? It's not that easy, right? So motivating other people is difficult. It's difficult. So, and let's check some words. It says times have changed. It's not, an easy, it's not as easy as just throwing orders. What is throwing? Anybody? A throwing is like when you have an object and you throw it away. You send it. You, I don't know. Like when you have a ball and then you throw the ball. So that's, that is throw. So uh, it says as easy as just throwing orders around and expecting to get results. As a leader, shouting orders at people isn't as easy and effective way to keep them motivated. The basis of motivation is rooted in positive emotions. So what is rooted? Ah, what is rooted, my friends? Okay, that verb comes from the word root like the causes, so the origins of something. So it's rooted in positive emotions. Whether you have just recently been promoted into a leadership role or you have been in one for a while, peer motivation can be difficult. 
and it can be a challenging and frustrating situation to be. Maybe you have finally found your dream opportunity or have put together your perfect team with stellar people. You have spent the time needed to find the right fit for each role. Uh, it says to find the right fit. What is fit? When you fit, it says, I don't fit in. Say. Fitness. Uh, when match, mm, it's not the same. It, it's something like that, yeah. When you Fitness. match, yeah. A society, a company, or anything. Very good. And then it says each person has an excellent background and a track record of success. And that is true. Everybody can be successful as we watch in the video, right? Um, that person is successful. He is sick. He and uh, the appearance is not like the normal one, but he's he's successful, he's happy. So Nice, that part. Do you have any questions on this slide? All right, the next one is for Jamie Raquel. Okay. On papers, this is obviously going to look like a perfect situation. Everything seems as though you're ready to take your business to the next level. And things start off great. But recently, you have been seeing a lot of motivation in your team members and have been trying to find ways to get them back off track. You know that they're the best. That's why you hide it, hiding them in the first place. Uh, but no matter who you are, there are always going to be times when you feel down and don't have the same motivation you used to. Being confident in a leadership position means that you can inspire those around you. And if you can help them get their spark back, Everybody wins. Very good. What did you understand? I understand that uh, um, if you are a leader in whatever company, you have uh, the responsibility to try the all the people that are your collaborate or co yes collaborate um, must be motivate but uh, you need to understand too that these collaborators are people and because uh, all are people and sometimes can be motivated and on other days it uh, could be it couldn't be so uh, a leader it try to get away for motivate them every day uh, whatever is, is is the situation very good perfect that is very very good so yes i mean motivating other people is something that is your responsibility if you are a leader and uh well it's not easy right so everybody's different and sometimes you don't match you don't I don't know, you don't feel comfortable with one person or anything like that. So, and that might cause some problems. Let's check what it says. On paper, this is obviously going to look like a perfect situation. Everything seems as though you're ready to take the, your business. Or though, what is though? Anybody remember? Though. Even though, we say. Do you remember? Oh, okay. Nice. That's something that we checked this, this week. Um, your business to the next level. As anything started off great, 
but recently you have been seeing a lack of motivation in your team members and have been trying to find ways to get them back on track. What is back on track? Okay, back on track is like when you are on a way, but suddenly you get off the way, you get distracted. And then you say that you have to be back on track, back, uh, focus again on what you are doing. So that is back. On track. You know that they are the best and that's why you hire them in the first place. But no matter who you are, there are always going to be times when you feel down and don't have the same motivation you used to. So this is what Jamie was saying, right? Sometimes you, uh, it's supposed that you are going to motivate other people, but if you are not motivated yourself, it's going to be very hard, right? It's going to be very, very difficult. So being confident in a leadership position means that you can inspire those around you. And if you can help them get their spark back, everybody wins. Definitely. Spark. What is spark? Okay, spark is like, how can I explain that one? When you have a match, do you know what is a match? Or a lighter. Uh, and you, or when you, in the movies, you see that there are people in the forest when they don't have energy or anything like that. They have two rocks and they hit one rock with the other one and then a spark comes out. So that is a spark. In this case, it's a metaphor, and it's speaking about uh, that that brilliance, that little things that is special in people. So that is the spot. Any questions here in this paragraph? I didn't understand what is spark, but. Mm, it's really difficult because there are other words that maybe you don't know, like a match. You know what is a match? Uh, or how can I say? A spark is like a light in the dark. Something like that. I don't know if that is more clear. No. Chispa. Spark okay. is chispa. So it's difficult, right, in English. <laughs> All right, any other question? Okay, so uh, the next one is for Sulma Janet. Okay, start with asking questions and listening intently. Sure, a lengthy speech can definitely, 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 uh, be motiva motivation, motivational. But what happens when you are done speaking? How much of what you say actually resonate with your audience? Motivation starts from the inside. Schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings or have casual, candid conversations. If it is an employee you want to try and motivate, ask what their dreams and goals are. 
chances are they they are going to give you answers that you might not have expect. Very good, perfect. Thank you. So, what did you understand of this one? Uh, this is about uh, no maybe the other people when you are talking and and try to to know how the people is uh, and how it's like a have one-on-one -on -one conversation uh, and try to motivate uh, and know about what what are the their goals um and and what and maybe what they expect for the future very good so that is it so uh motivation is something that you need to research right uh, when you want to motivate other people uh, you need to understand them so this is the first step for you to motivate other people Start with asking questions and listening intently. So sure says a lengthy speech can definitely be motivation. What is lengthy? Anybody knows? It's like a long speech. Very good. It's long speech, right? So speech, you know that. What is that? So and yes, it's true, sometimes a speech can be very motivational, but not always. And it says, but what happens when you're done speaking? How much of what you said actually resonated with your audience? And that is a very good question. You can speak and maybe people in the very moment, they feel very nice. But what happens when they go home? When they continue working, you're not going to be speaking or giving speeches every day, right? So something has to be changed there. Uh, resonated, what is resonated? For me, resonated is when a word or a speech, it, it is a long time on your mind. Very good, perfect. That is nice. And it says motivation starts from the inside. Schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings or have casual, candid conversations. If it's an employee you want to try and motivate, ask what their dreams and goals are. Chances are they're going to give you answers that you might not have expected. So very true. Uh, first, if you want to motivate some other, you need to understand, listen, ask what they want so you can try to find the right motivation. Any questions here on this one? Okay, let's move on then. Um, Erica, could you please help me reading this one? Uh, we cannot listen to you. Uh, is it possible for you to read, Erica? Yes, I am. I'm sorry. All right. I was having my little sister to link her work. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. It says, listen to what they say and continue to ask questions. Get to know them on a personal level and truly understand what makes them tick. <laughs> yeah. You can start with questions like, what are your biggest career goals or what makes you excited about doing what you do? And not only will they know that actually, okay, 
but getting them to speak openly about what makes them happiness can help them get back on track. They can start to forget about what what might be what might what might be making them feel down. <laughs> Very good, perfect. So, what did you understand on this one? Actually, uh, what are your biggest career goals or what makes you excited about doing what you do are, for me, the best question that you can do to your uh, employees or uh, to your co-worker because maybe it's not about to be the best friends forever and ever, but if you understand or you are on, on his feet uh, and I'm sorry, on his shoes, I don't remember the phrase, but... Um, you can give them actually resonated words or resonated phrases to continue grow into <laughs> into the the, the 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 company actually if you saw something uh, on your coworker or with your co with your partner actually just ask him and you're gonna hear what they actually need to hear from you especially if you are the, the manager for me, okay. that's it. Very good. That is it. Perfect. So, uh, yes, uh, it's very interesting what it says, truly understand, right? Um, again, this is difficult, right? If you have 100 people uh, and you want to motivate them, um, truly understand every person is hard. It's difficult. Uh, anyway, sometimes, even when you uh, are trying to do that one, sometimes people, they are not open, right? It's, it's difficult say things or they see you as the boss right so they are not confident so that is something that takes time uh, you need to move on little by little and then try to gain their confidence so they can trust you and tell you uh, what is it what what you need to know so you can motivate them so it says listen to what they say and continue to ask questions get to know them on a personal level and truly understand what makes them tick what is tick It is kind of a, a flea, but on, on animals, I think. Uh, not in this case. That is good uh, as a, uh, as a, how can I say, as a noun. Uh, but in this case, think is something like marks you. It gives you something into you. So that would be very good. And then it says you can start with questions like what are your biggest career goals or what makes you excited about doing what you do? Not only will they know that you actually care, but getting them to speak openly about what makes them happiest can help them get back on track. They can start to forget about what might be making them feel down. Very good. Interesting, the phrasing on this last paragraph. So you can see that sometimes you need to move some words or do emphasize on some things. Any questions here in this slide? Okay, this one is going to be for uh, Jose Alberto. Okay, teacher. Figure out what motivates the most. Think about why you do the things that you do? Is it a drive to become better, a passion for learning, the ultimate goal of becoming successful, whatever that might be? Understanding what motivates and drives people to be their best can allow you to help them get there. And if they don't really know, you can help them find their purpose. Uh, why did they want to work for your business in the first place? Good. What did you get from this one? Um, um, something uh, we don't know or, or our, co uh, our co-workers are Walking in the in the in the uh, 
in the in the way uh but they don't know really they don't know what what he, what they want or what they need to be uh successful and when we uh, think about the the things uh, that we do is is so when we can find the 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 way and we need to 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 find we need to find the the things that are, we need to be happy to be uh I don't know, uh, completos in our work. Yeah, to feel fulfilled, right? Some... Uh -huh. Something like that. Perfect. Be... Very good. Uh, go ahead. No, no, that's all. Okay. Uh, yes. So once you ask questions and identify what people want to achieve, then you can figure it out what motivates them. Um, there are some things that are very common for some people it's money right if you give them money if you give them bonuses they are happy for other people it's intrinsic as we were discussing right you are a very good worker you are amazing that is the motivation and for other people it's like uh, things like free time of one free day or anything like that so everybody has different motivation of course the Biggest motivation is the family, right? You are there because you need the money. But, I mean, you can go further and try to motivate in different ways. Let's check the paragraph. Figure out uh, what motivates them most. Think about why you do the things that you do. Is it a drive to become better? Okay, this is an interesting one. Is it a drive? When you say something like that, is it a drive? What is the meaning? Okay, in this case, is is that what moves you? Okay, uh, not everybody wants to be better. For example, uh, sometimes I have spoken with other people, uh, motivating them to grow within the company, and they say, "No, I don't want to be a, a, a boss. I don't. I'm happy here. I, I I mean, I come to my job. I do what I have to do. I don't want to apply. So sometimes their drive." is different uh, than uh, grow within the company, that having a better position, have more money or anything like that. Sometimes their drive is something, what motivates them, what moves them. So that is, is it a drive? Uh, a passion for learning. Some people, they have passion for learning. They want to know many things. The ultimate goal of becoming successful, whatever that might be. Understanding what motivates and drives people to be their best can allow you to help them get there. And if they don't really know, you can help them find their purpose. Why did they want to work for your business in the first place? That is a very Yeah, money, right? Again, yeah, you need to pay debts. You need to, you want a car, or many other things. But I mean, they can go to any kind of industry any kind of work, any other company. Why did they choose this company and not other companies? That is a question that can help you identify why, what motivates them. Anybody has a question in this pattern? Okay. Let's move on. Or, okay, the next one is going to be for, let's see, uh, Holma, Saul. Not possible. Ah, hi, yeah. hi. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> uh, 
What are the <clears throat> What are they most patient patient passionate passionate mm -hmm. about What are their aspirations goals and overall interest inter interest interests a great leader leader is going to show inter in, interest in what motivators their employees or team members not knowing what their purpose is let's you remind them of it of it you can then take the repair steps to provide them with what they need. Emotional engagement is critical in figuring out what motivates motivates people. Good. What did you understand? Um, I think it's, it's like, um, uh, always, uh, a team or co-workers or our management have a goal, have a purpose, to to achieve so i think it's like the the ma manager uh, have to have to do uh the the way to 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 achieve the the, the goals the purpose uh, have to to motivate to be visionary visionary and have to do how 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 can I say how yeah. how we can I say to 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 achieve a goal very good perfect so that is it i mean uh you need to understand their aspirations and sometimes they are very different from the ones that you have or the companies have a uh, goals interests right and uh, of course you have to show interest in what motivates them so that is sometimes one of the most difficult parts so uh, I mean, sometimes they tell you things that you don't care about, that you don't like, you don't understand. But you need to, you need to get interested in what they want, what they need. So that is something that is important, right? Okay, and a great leader, uh, well, that's what it says there. Knowing what their purpose is lets you remind them of it. You can then take the proper steps to provide them with what they need. Emotional engagement is critical in figuring out what motivates people. So def, this is uh, linked to emotional intelligence. I remember that we checked that one before, right? So definitely this is very important. I don't see any word here. Do you have any questions or comments? In these uh, paragraphs that we have read, there are some structures and, and uh, some sentences that are interesting. For example, knowing what their purpose is, lets you remind them of it. So sometimes for us that we speak Spanish, it's kind of difficult to, to build sentences like that one, mostly in, at the end, them of it. Okay, so maybe the most common is that we say, knowing what their purpose is, lets you remind them. And that's it. But it's of it 
is very important that part. So let's be careful when we write sentences to check that what are the possibilities of doing something, okay? Okay, the next one is going to be for Osvin Alexis. Provide, provide surprise and compliment uh, as often as possible. You're not going to be able to keep the best people around you if they don't know that yeah. they value. Value. Everyone on some level like to hear that they have done a good job. It doesn't have to be anything major or ever the tops. But complimenting people or their good work and praising their good qualities will go a long way. Recognition and praise are incredible, powerful, motivate, motivator, and several benefits come from praise for everyone involved. All right, what did you understand from this? Um, uh, I, I understand that um, the people have a uh, different uh, different uh, levels um, and uh, the people have a different capacities too. The, it's necessary to understand oh, that quality of the people. Okay, very good. So, uh, yes. When you know the qualities and when they do a very good job, when you praise them and provide compliments, oh, that is important. I won't challenge you. For me, that is more important than money sometimes. I, I sleep very well, I feel happy. Yeah, money is important, right? But um, if you know that you are doing a very good job, that you are a very important part of the company, you feel very nice, right? Sometimes, as I don't know if you remember those commercials uh, from MasterCard. Uh, you can buy anything, right? For uh, special moments are, are invaluable. So some like that one. And this part is like that. So you need to compliment. You need to praise people. And it says you're not going to be able to keep the best people around you if they don't know what that they are about. Everyone on some level likes to hear that they have done a good job. It doesn't have to be anything major or over the top. That is important. I mean, you don't have to wait for them to do something, something amazing. I mean, just to change a behavior. That is something good, right? But complimenting people on their good work and praising their good qualities will go a long way. Recognition and price are incredibly powerful motivators and several benefits come from praise for everyone involved. Nice. Over the top. What is over the top? Like a high. Like high, something very, very important, something that, I mean, changed a lot of things, right? So that is over the top. Good. I don't see any other word here. Do you have any question? Hey, I have a question for Osvin. Osvin was reading, right? Uh, hello, Osvin, are you there? Yeah. I want to ask you something. What is the meaning of your name, Osvin? I never heard that name. I uh, similar Osmin. 
I I I think um in the alcaldía <laughs> they make a mistake and put uh, put me a uh, Osmin. Y no Osmin. Y my dad. <laughs> The good thing is that you are unique. You are the only one probably in the world that you have that name. So it's very interesting, very good. Yes. Perfect, thank you for sharing. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, let's see. Christian, is it possible for you to read? <laughs> I guess not. Uh, let's see who else is here. Carla Lorena. Okay, teacher. If you regular, regular, <laughs> regularly praise your employees for the work that they do, they will provide you with higher loyalty plus their productivity can increase which can translate into higher customer satisfaction try and complement those around you on a weekly basis very good what did you understand on this one is talking about is a if we if we have to to regularly to regularly praise the employees uh, if you do that the employees uh, and make the job better and they are loyalty with 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 us or with the was and the productivity of the people increase and they and they make the the job with maybe with motivated very good that is it right i mean it's not the same that you go to your job and go to the office and do what you have to do. Then your boss comes and say, hey, good morning. You are very important for the company. So I hope you have a very good day. And that's it. I mean, sometimes little words are going to make the difference, right? And actually, this is true not only for the workers. You know, a lot of people... Uh, they recommend, I mean, when you speak about regrets of people that they are dying or things that you didn't do and when you are older, you regret, is that, that sometimes you want to to do these kind of things also with your family and with your friends, right? Sometimes we don't say to the people there in the, in the house or in the family, you are important, you are a very nice person. I love you very much. And that makes them feel different right so that makes them feel in a different level so this is true not only for your peers and co-workers or your team this is true for everybody right so if you have the chance you have to go and do it for everybody that you really care let's check it says if you regularly praise your employees for the work that they do they will provide you with higher loyalty what is loyalty When the um, co-workers are um, uh, <laughs> I don't know how how can I explain it um, don't make anything action that could be um, or could, could be or, or receive bad results result our comments okay or do or, the, or do something 
be house of you, something like that. I mean, I don't know how can I explain. Yeah. All right, very good. Yeah, it's something like that. What I've raised people that are there in the good times and in the bad times, right? And they are truly friend of you. They are truly with you. They really believe. So that is it. That is loyalty. And there's this plus their productivity can increase, which can translate into higher customer satisfaction. Try and compliment those around you on a weekly basis. Yeah. Maybe every day, maybe it's not good because then everybody says, okay, I'm special, whatever. Right? So weekly basis is a good thing to do. Any questions here in this paragraph? Teacher, uh, um, I, I know many managers of bus that only say the employees that they make wrong, but never say anything about the, the employees make good. That is true. Uh, maybe that is the most common, right? The most common is that managers the bosses they say you're not good you did this wrong or anything like that so and uh i mean you need to correct people that is something that is true uh you need to correct behaviors you need to correct the performance of some people but you can do it in a, in a good way to to tell them that this is like for their own good right like your mom right your mom when they when she used to punish you uh, all I believe that to everybody they say that it's for your own good it's because I want you to be a good person so uh, there are good ways for you to correct people for you to make them to be back on track so that is for sure the most of the people yeah probably is not good but they do only bad things right? so not good at all Good, perfect. So the next tip is give them what they need. Of course, not everything, right? But for their job. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ivan Petrovich. Not possible. Daniel Antonio Luna. Okay, um, give them what they need. A great leader can't expect exceptional work without providing the necessary resource. If you provide your employees with that they need and when they need, they are more likely to provide better work. Only or uh, continue? Please continue, yeah. Okay. And if you don't know what they need, ask ask them what is that you need to do your job to the best of your ability. A new workspace might make all the difference in the world. They might need new equipment or they might just need a little more information. Good. What did you understand here? Okay, I understand. And um, when I, in my case, when I, for for I do my 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 job, I need, for example, a uh, APP, uh, equipment personal protection, and if he, if the uh, if the equipment is those doesn't work, I I I show to 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 say to my supervisor, hey, I need a a headphones, I need a a new book, so I don't know if if the if responsible responsibility of the company to to provide to me provide provide to me the, the the equipment for for I do my 
my I do better my my yoke. Very good. So, uh, yeah, this is very important. I mean, sometimes the employees they are frustrated because they need some tools to do their job. I mean, they really want to do their job very good. But if they don't have the tools, the resources, I mean, they won't be able to do their job. Maybe the boss can come and say, why don't you do these things? And he would be frustrated. He would be, it's not good. So everything is going to be not good, right? So this is something very important. Let's check what it says. A great leader can expect exceptional work without providing the necessary resources. If you provide your employees with what they need and when they need it, they are more likely to provide better work. And if you don't know what they need, ask. Ask them what it is that you need to do your job so the best uh, of your ability. And your workspace might make all the difference in the world. They might need new equipment or they might just need a little more information. So that is so. A little bit, something, something very easy can change everything. And they will feel also better. And if you listen to them, I mean, it's a plus. So this is a very, very good, a good advice. Uh, do you have any question, any vocabulary here? Okay, very good. Let's go to the next one. Uh, Nelson Antonio Rodas. Plus, asking what they need instead of expecting them to already have the show that you care. And when your team members or employees know that you care, they're going to provide the best work possible. Good, a short one. What did you understand from this one? Okay, it's a little difficult, but I, I, understand, I understand that, that you instead of expecting is very very asking what they what they care and and what the the, the thing no what what that you care maybe they they can't or they will 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 give or, or or provide or to do the the best possible for for the work. I don't know. I, it's difficult to understand that. Okay. It says plus asking what they need instead of expecting them to already have it shows that you care. And when your team members or employees know that you care, they are going to provide the best work possible. So what it means is that that happens a lot. Here in Latin America, this is very common, that the employee doesn't have the resources, the tools, or the information. And the boss believes that the employee knows the information or have all the resources. So the boss is saying, oh my goodness, this employee is not working well, I don't know what I'm going to do. And the employee says, oh my goodness, I just can't do my job because I don't have this tool that I really need. Or it's, I have the tool, but it's not working properly. And there is a miscommunication there. So that is a big problem. And that happens in a lot of companies, families, relationships. So it's a big problem. So that's why it's better to ask us. I mean, are you happy? Are you satisfied? Uh, what do you need? What do you want? Uh, is everything working very well here? That is very important. Communication. 
open communication. Now, it's, it's a very important thing that we need to consider. Okay. Do you have any question here? All right, the next one is going to be for Manuel. Uh, are you able to read? Uh, it's possible. Okay, uh, Hector says I'm sick. Lucy, Natalie. Hi, teacher. Hello. Mm, okay. Provide the resources and training to develop new skills. This can probably go with number four, but it deserves its own section. One of the most effective ways to keep the best employees is to foster an environment where they can grow. And you can do this providing training opportunities where they can learn or develop new skills. Try setting up monthly training programs or knowledge sessions. Not only will will your employees learn new skills but it can also give them something to look forward to or you could even bring in industry leaders and experts to speak hearing first-hand accounts of how those who are most successful got to where they are can be powerful motivation employees can come back feeling refreshed and have a newfound motivation to be the best that they can be. Good. What did you understand here? I think that are like um, some ways to improve the motivation in the employees. That is because sometimes in the workplace, we don't have a lot of opportunities for training. And that is is a bad way to leadership okay very good so yeah actually you mentioned training and that is very important right so training programs of knowledge sessions are very important for people to move on to check uh, certain things right it says this could probably go with number four but it deserves its own section what is deserves Okay, the services like when you can I explain that? When you work for something and you deserve a pain, it's like the reward because of your actions, something like that. One of the most effective ways to give the best employees is to foster an environment where they can grow. Foster, what is to foster? Is something in, in like to get or to promote something? Very good to promote something. Nice. And then it says, and you can do this by providing training opportunities where they can learn or develop new skills. Try setting up monthly training programs or knowledge sessions. Not only will your employees learn new skills, but it can also give them something to look forward to, or you could even bring in industry leaders and experts to speak. Oh, that is a good one. It's not that common. Hearing first-hand accounts of how those who are most successful got to where they are can be powerful motivation. Employees can come back feeling refreshed and have a newfound motivation to be the best that they can be. Of course, this is something very important. Training uh, in training is also a very good tool for you to to get feedback from the company. So that is also very important. Any questions here in this slide? Good. 
clear as horchata. Let's go to the next one. Involve those around you. Kenya, Cecilia. Not possible. Vanessa, no, me. Okay. Involve those around you. Being a great leader and motivating those around you means that it's a two-way street. It's difficult for an employee to feel valued if they are never included in conversations or decisions making. By involving them throughout different processes, they become more invested in a positive outcome. There are going to be times where decisions have to get made. And obviously, sometimes you are going to make the final call. But hearing different points of view and involving the whole team will make everyone feel included. This will direct, directly contribute to an increased level of motivation. Good. What did you understand here? Well, I think this is a, an important part in a, in a team. The leader has to involve all the opinions of the co-workers in order to to know what they think and also it could could help to to join all the ideas and has a better result so in this in this way the people get um get confident and they are sure that the leader is is taking their opinion and and important so the 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 team can can work better i think and with that it can can exceed some like um conflicts if they work together i think very good. So definitely, right? Remember that the word is team, right? To be in a team means that probably you are the leader, but everybody is important. And you need to not only listen to them, but involve them whenever it's possible. Sometimes it's not possible. Uh, involve them into the processes, into many things. So that is going to be something very, very important. Let's check. It says, being a great leader and motivating those around you means that it's a two-way street. It's difficult for an employee to feel valued if they're never included in conversation or decision-making. By involving them throughout different processes, they become more invested in a positive outcome. There are going to be times where decisions have to get made. And obviously, sometimes you are going to make a final call. But hearing different points of view and involving the whole team will make everyone feel clear. This will directly contribute to an increased level of motivation. And when it says you are going to make the final call, of course, that is, you will make the final decision sometimes. Uh, but listen to them is also a very good idea. Any questions here in this slide? Teacher, what when it says two way street is like two options. Uh well, when you say it's a two way street, it means that you give uh feedback and they give you feedback. You give opinion and they give you opinion. So it's give and receive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Uh, any other question? Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, Samantha, is it possible for you? Not possible. Okay, Fatima. Yes. Okay. Believe in tools around you. There is no sense in surrounding 
yourself with incredible people and team members, only not to believe in them. You hire them for a reason. The best leaders are going to delegate and give their employees responsibility. Ask yourself these questions. Do you trust your employees to do their work? Are your employees competent and know to complete their work with confidence? Don't underestimate the overall ability and potential of your employees. It was mentioned about, but they were hired for a reason. Support them and provide opportunities for them to succeed when they know that you believe in them. They are more likely to go above and beyond. Very good. What did you understand on that one? Um, talk about... Um, the responsibility of manager to hire people who come uh, who can confirm and and know to to delegate the responsibilities and know uh, how these people uh, work efficiently. Okay, very good. So yes, uh, when you have your team, even if you didn't choose them, uh, you need to believe in them. You need to develop them, right? Because uh, yeah, maybe they're not perfect, but if you get the, the best part of all of them, uh, it's going to work very good. Okay. Uh, let's check. It says, there's no sense in surrounding yourself with incredible people and team members only not to believe in them. Surrounding. What is surrounding? I think it's like when something is near or no? Something like that. Surrounded is around you. Okay, and let's see what else. You hire them for reason. The best leaders are going to delegate and give their employees responsibility. Ask yourself these questions. Do you trust your employees to do their work? Are your employees competent enough? to complete their work with confidence. And it says don't underestimate. What is underestimate? The underestimate is when you uh, when you underestimate somebody is when you believe that they don't have the abilities, the skills to do something. So that is underestimate. The overall ability and potential of your it was mentioned about, but they were hired for a reason. Support them and provide opportunities for them to succeed. When they know that you believe in them, they're more likely to go above and beyond. What is to go above and beyond? And to go above and beyond, it means that your employees are going to do not only what you 
request, but also more. They will be always willing to help, help the team. So that is to go above and beyond. Any questions here in this slide? Okay. Follow up on the things that you say and the promises that you made. Ah, it's an important. Uh, Herman Alexander, is it possible for you to read? Not possible. All right, let's check who's going to be this one. Uh, Jamie Raquel. Okay. Please. Follow up on the things that you say and the promise that you made. It is one thing to say the right thing and make certain promise when you have one on one conversation when I am plugging and find out their dreams and aspirations follow up with them it doesn't have to be every week but try and make a conscientious effort to continue to engage them this way you can determine determine if they have made any progress toward their goals and if they haven't or they aren't as close as they hope you can help this can be this can be by providing additional resource or simply having an open conversation very good perfect so what did you understand here First of all, if you are a leader, uh, you have to um, you have to um, try to, to um, try to stimulate. Uh, to get your your goals and you need to know asking him or asking them uh, what are their their goals and try to stimulate and achieve them her goal their goals and and if you see that they aren't working for reach your goal, you try to talk with, with the co-workers and continue to give, give them um, give them stimulate i don't know something like that very good person thank you so yes you need to motivate them and you need to listen to them but also when you promise that you are going to do something you need to do it, right you need to acknowledge uh, that you say so and if you believe it's not possible it's better you to say it's not possible right that is the passage so let's check, it says, it's one thing uh, to say the right things and make certain promises. When you have a one-on-one -one conversation with an employee and find out their dreams and aspirations, follow up with them. It doesn't have to be every week, but try and make a conscious effort to continue to engage them. This way you can determine if they have made any progress towards their goals. And if they haven't or they aren't as close as they hoped, you can help. 
This can be by providing additional resources or simply having an open conversation. So I don't see any new words here, but I don't know if you have any questions. Do you have any questions here? No questions, let's move on. Let's see, the next one is for Jose Alberto. Okay. Sometimes employees need to be reminded of why they do what what they do, what what they do. Yes, and as a leader <laughs> and as a leader, you can help motivate them motivate them to become the best they can be. If you say you are going to do something or make a promise and don't deliver, it can bring the level of trust down. Checking regularly and show that you care. The smallest of conversations can have the biggest of impacts. Good, what did you understand here? I think this is about the um when you say something you need to do that you say because if you don't do it you are a, you are a liar for your for your coworkers or your employees and when when we are uh, uh, make a promise and and that that promise is in a conversation a one on one conversation uh, is a more most more important is 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 have a that's have a um um compromise compromise uh -huh. With 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 our coworkers or with our employees, it is for for our image in front of of them. Okay, so that is it. I mean, uh, yes, uh, you don't want your employees to like, right? I mean, it's something that that it, you don't accept. Uh, for example, if they say some numbers and at the end the numbers are not the correct ones. You, I mean, you have a conversation with them very serious. Right? Don't do this because of this. So the same happens the other way around. If you say something that is not correct, it's not good, the employees, they uh, they will feel that way. They will know that something is not correct, right? So we need to be very careful of those things, definitely. Let's really check some uh, well, pronunciation and then they are covered. Sometimes employees need to be reminded of why they do what they do. Uh, that is quite much. And, it's, and as a leader, you can help motivate them to become the best they can be. If you say you're going to do something or make a promise, don't deliver, it can bring the level of trust down. Of course, that. Check in regularly and show that you care. The smallest of conversation can have the biggest of impacts. I don't see any new word, but do you have any question? Oh, no questions. Okay. We did this already. And we did this already. Set achievable goals. This is a very important one. Let's see, Carla Lorena. Set achieve goals. A lot of times people don't feel as motivated, motivated as they should because they don't achieve the result that they want. And this can happen if unrealistic goal gets set if a goal isn't actually attainable. 
you are setting yourself up for failure from the start. Unrealistic goals become nearly impossible to achieve. Try and focus on setting smaller and more achieved goals with your employees. You can even set a small milestone to reach. You can you can do this by setting weekly goals, monthly goals, or even just a line, a list of a smaller goals to go for where your employees become focuses on the results and on the results that they want, they will feel more motivated when they see results. Very good. What did you understand on this one? Uh, Uh, is talking about the people and sometimes or oh, a lot of time uh, don't feel motivated. Uh, and, and, uh, can make a uh, 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 weekly goals or 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 a list for a small goals for me in when in in talk about the if the employees feel motivated uh, the results is better. I think. Okay, very good. So, yes, uh, you most likely you are the one who set some goals for your team. Uh, so, but as you remember, achieve is something that you can actually accomplish, right? So, you need to set achievable goals. Impossible goals are not, not too low, but not too high. So, it has you need to analyze. What is possible to be done? Check the resources, uh, how many people you have. Uh, many things are involved. Uh, because if you set too high goals, employees, they won't set the goal, they won't achieve the goals, and they will feel frustrated. Definitely, that is going to happen. So it says, a lot of times people don't feel as motivated as they should because they don't achieve the results that they want. And this can happen if unrealistic goals get set. If a goal isn't actually attainable, you're setting yourself up for failure from the start. Attainable, what is attainable? Maybe it's something that you can make, or, ma or, uh -huh. or, or you can do something that you can achieve, right? Something that is possible to reach. Very good. Uh, and then it says unrealistic goals become nearly impossible to achieve. Unrealistic. What is something unrealistic?
is something too uh, very um, difficult to to achieve. Very good. Something difficult can be to can be a, a, a life. Yeah. So not not real, but so it's not possible. I mean, in mind that I say to you, okay, in a month everybody's going to be bilingual and we're going to go to the United States. Ah, that is not possible. Like uh, some of you just speak very very well. Probably is very close, but you need to practice a little bit more and things like that. So yes, if we continue coming to the classes, we will be able to, to be there, right? Not in ten days or something like that. So that is not. And then it says, uh, try and focus on setting smaller and more achievable goals with your employees. You can even set small milestones to reach. What is milestones? A milestone is something significant that you Maybe it's not big, but it's significant. It's something, a very good change, a very no, good movement. Then it says you can do this by setting weekly goals, monthly goals, or even just a list of smaller goals to go for. When your employees become focused on the results that they want, they will feel more motivated when they see results. That, that is good. So, do you have any questions on this slide? No questions. Okay, very good. So, those were some tips for you to motivate people. So let's speak ab about, about that one right now. So uh, what motivates you? Could you please share with us what motivates you? A bonus. A bonus, that, yeah, money is important. Because yes, important. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because then you can purchase different things. You can do many other things. A good environment of work. That is a very important. No fights, right? Everybody's friend and everybody helps each other. Idealistic sometimes is not possible. But if, let's say, 90% of the time the environment is good, you are in a good place and you want to stay there. What else motivates you? For me, teacher, have a good co work it's that you have with uh, a good relationship with them. That is it, right? Yeah, when you have good relationship with your peers, uh, that is something very because, I mean, you trust in them, you share with them, and you know that if you have questions about anything, you can go and ask. Them. So it's a very good thing. Any other person wants to share? Okay. So let's go a little bit beyond. So motivation is important when you want to motivate other people. Right, motivating other people is difficult and you need to understand yourself. But what do you do when you want to motivate yourself? Sometimes you are not motivated, right? You say, oh, I don't want to go to my job or not only with your job, but in life, right? Sometimes in life is like, my goodness, it's difficult. Something happened to me and I don't feel very good tonight or today. What do you do? to motivate yourself. Yeah, teacher, I think what you say is, is, is true because 
I think it's it's easy to motivate other people, but motivating by yourself it's more difficult. For me, I I think I I I I think about the the benefits that uh, I'm gonna have if I do something that uh, the experience that I have rich if I for example take a new class um what um what else or oh, or the the new position that I can get if I I learn a new for example a new idiom from this case and what language. what are the, the what uh, language sorry what are the benefits that I can reach if I if I accomplish some some new 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 task I think yes that is true so uh it's difficult, as you said. It's difficult. I believe that we, everybody, we have different strategies. Sometimes it's not possible, right? Sometimes we go and ask other people for help, but sometimes it's not possible that either. So we need to do it ourselves. So yes, you need to analyze uh, where am I right now, where I want to go, right? And motivate yourself. Any other person wants to share? Uh, what do you do to motivate yourself? For me, teacher, if that is the, the, the most difficult thing to do because, um, well, in, in my case, in, in, in my job, I I need to to go with my customers with the best attitude. Because if I don't uh, have the motivation, my customers see my, oh, um, no se percibe in, in, in Spanish, uh, the, the attitude and, and is the same thing with with um, other other customers if i don't have the motivation and uh, i can do it my job and i can achieve my goals so when i need to motivate about myself uh, I need to think about my goals, my objectives, and all the things that we want for my my people, the people we we, we love. Uh, there is a phrase that says uh, uh, that each each person knows where is the the, the shoe pinch. And what is the things that we can lose if we don't do it the best effort? So it's, it's difficult, but uh, we need to talk to to think about all that uh, the things what that we can lose. Okay, very good, perfect. So interesting. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, thinking about what we have, right? What we can lose is is a very important one. So yeah, things happen. Sometimes we had accidents, we lose money. Sometimes uh, we make a, a big effort, but we don't achieve what we want. Or sometimes we just feel blue, right? Sometimes there is no reason. I mean, some days we are like, oh my goodness. But we need to move on. We cannot stop. We cannot stay. Uh, nevertheless, there are people that they think to stop, right? So uh, I believe that most of the people in the planet sometimes they think about suicide for example, in one moment of their lives. Some people, they don't think just one moment. They, they have different moments until they actually do it. And that is a problem. 
because I mean they feel lonely, they feel that life is not good for them. So if you feel like that one, definitely you need to for first of all look for help. Uh, nobody is alone, right? There is always somebody that can listen to you, that can help you. And uh, those are just moments, you know, little moments, bad moments, bad days. But those days are going to finish. Life is about moments. It's about decisions. So you need to decide what you're going to do with the days that you have. Because one day that is finished is done and you cannot recover that. Time is the most valuable asset that we have right most more than money more than any other thing because if you lose money tomorrow you can have more money but the day that is lost you cannot recover that anymore so yes definitely we need to move on and thinking about that one let's get a little bit more philosophical what do you think is the meaning of life uh, that's a good one Why are you here in this planet? With proposals. Why? What is the meaning of your life? In your opinion, of course. It's so deep. <laughs> yeah, it's a deep question, right? Uh, but sometimes it's very good to ask that questions. Sometimes we are working a lot. You know, I work a lot, a lot. And sometimes I think to myself, uh, maybe I need to stop, right? I need to stop working. Um, I tell to my peers, I have been working without vacation for three years, almost four years now. I'm happy working, but sometimes we need to stop. Sometimes I work too much, uh, but everybody has different means. Some, sometimes I, I like to think about that. I like to think about why, why are we here? Why are you here? Because the meaning of life is different for everybody, right? It's not the same for me than for you, than for your sons, for example, or daughters. But then you have to ask yourself, why? Why am I here in this plan? One day we are not going to be here anymore. What we did here. So tell me, I want to know. Uh -huh. Maybe mm -hmm. we have a, a mm -hmm. purpose, I think, in order to to help other people or or contribute contribute contributing contribute I was say contribute to contribute contribute to the society and and make some important to the world like other people. Uh, had done in the in the life to be very good that is like a nice purpose to help other people to be better right to be a better person mm -hmm. that is very nice uh, Jose Alberto you were going to say something yes teacher I, I think it's, it's the same the same thing uh, that Vanessa say um, is for me, uh, is trying to leave a legacy, not only for me or not only for my families, maybe for for all the people is around me. Can what can I do it for for help? 
what can I do for for leave something with the other persons, the persons uh, or the people that um, is important to me? I think, I guess, I don't know. Very good, perfect. That is a nice thing. So, uh, yes, uh, to help people, I mean, when you help somebody, you feel something very nice, right? You feel, uh, you feel something inside of you. And this is very good because it's only yours, right? It's like, you know, I really love to give presents, but it's not the present itself. You love when you see the face of the other person, right? When you uh, see that that person liked the present. So then you say, oh, it was very good, right? Any other person wants to share what is the meaning of life? Uh, teacher, I think that we have many opportunities to live in another life. Uh, I don't know how to say this uh, reincarnation. Reincarnation. Uh, yeah. Uh, it depends on what do you do in this life. You can have uh, other chance to change, uh, to have different uh, life and maybe being other person, uh, different country with different people. But I, I don't believe that this is the unique opportunity to live. Very good, interesting. So. Uh, yes, that is like a, a more philosophical idea, right? It would be very good if you have many opportunities to do things, uh, to change. Things. So I have a video that I want to show you, but we don't have enough time. So tomorrow, maybe at the end of the class, if we have the time, and I guess we are going to have time, we can see that one and analyze. It's a very good thing, you know, and we're going to discuss about that tomorrow. But... I mean, not only reincarnation, I believe that every day is a new opportunity, right? What you are going to do with that opportunity, that depends on you, right? It might be something very good, amazing, or something that maybe it was just another day, right? But if you help only one person, if you helped one person, you, you did something nice. If you did something good, or if you grow, if you learn something, right? So I know that sometimes it's difficult. I mean, you see on the news, for example, people that they are fighting on the street just because one car passes the other car and they are, I mean, on the street fighting, getting to the fists. And I mean, you and on this side, you say people are crazy, right? But what happens when you are driving? And you get angry, right? That happens to us. And sometimes in a little moment, you can destroy everything. I mean, many things can happen. Life is so, I mean, so delicate that we can, we can change our lives for good and for bad in a little moment. And we need to be very careful because we humans, we are like that. Sometimes we're angry. Sometimes we are jealous. Sometimes we do things that are not good. So, yeah, it's a new opportunity every day. And, uh, yeah, actually, I do believe also in reincarnation. I believe that that would be something very good. It would be something amazing. I don't know what happens after we die. I believe that there is another topic, right? I believe that everybody has different beliefs. I know that there are people that are very religious and they believe in certain things, uh, but actually that's why the, the word is belief, right? You believe that that is the truth, but the truth is going to be there only when we die. That will be it. So uh, we need to think a little bit more about what we do in our lives what we do when right now this moment uh with tomorrow with the days that we live because one day suddenly one day 
we are not going to be here. So we need to take advantage of that time and uh, motivate people. I mean, not only employees, but families, but anybody. I mean, on the street, you can help a little person and that person maybe will be touching you. You will be able to change their lives at least one day. Good, nice, interesting class. So tomorrow we're going to continue. As I was telling you, I promised to, to show you the video. It's a very nice video, you know, uh, that uh, my son showed me that one because we used to talk a lot about philosophy, life and death and things like that one. And since he likes that one, uh, he found that on YouTube and he showed me that one and I was amazed. Very good. Anyways, that would be, do you have any questions for the class of tonight? Okay. So let's check the attendance and let's go to bed. Christian Alexander Arevalo Delgado. Daniel Antonio Luna. Present teacher. Good. Daniel Arquimedes Florentino Garcia. Present. Good. Erika Jasmine Martinez Carpio. Present. Good. Fatima Denise Aguilar Marquez. Present. Good. Herman Alexander Duran Linares. Hector Francisco Morales Rico. Present teacher. <clears throat> Mami. Ivan Petrovich Guzman Aquino. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Present. Good. Holman Saúl Giron Sánchez. Present. Good. Jose Alberto Baños Hernández. Present. Good. Carla Lorena Leiva Contreras. Present. Good. Kenia Cecilia Ruiz Morán. Present. Good. Lucy Natalie Juárez de Ramírez. Right here. Good. Manuel Antonio Escamilla Jurado. Nelson Antonio Arroda Rosales. Present. Good. Osfin Alexis Flores Hernández. Present. Good. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Present. Good. Zulma Janet Ramírez Ábalos. Present. Good. Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemos. Present. Good. David Alexander Rodriguez Sanchez. Present teacher. Perfect. It was very good to see you tonight. Hope you have a very good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow in Dream in English. Thank good you. Bye-bye. Okay. Good night. Have a nice night. Good night. night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hello. Ah, oh, very good, perfect. Thank you, Jamie, of course. Hmm. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Hello, uh, do you have any question or anything that you want to discuss?